Hello, hello, my name's Ann. You're watching Art on the Creek, and today is Saturday Review Day. Today, we're gonna to talk about just a few water brushes. I have a few. Some of them are frustrating, some of them aren't. So I kind of thought I would save you a little bit of trouble and show you which one that I really like. There is a brand that I do like more than the others. Are you ready? Let's hit it. some fun today. Let's look at some water brushes because as much as people have a love-hate relationship with them, I do, I do. Um, I need them sometimes because they're so convenient. They hold a considerable amount of water. It's amazing how little water you can get away with, especially when you're painting plein air. And that's when these are so completely convenient, especially if you're a line and wash artist. A water brush, I would kind of recommend getting your hands on one. So let's look at the Karen Dash first. Great art company, right? Well, they make water brushes. However, I think maybe they either need to improve them or not make any more. <laughs> They're a little bit futzy. They're kind of high maintenance. These are like the Kim Kardashian of water brushes because <laughs> you, let me let me explain. Um, they come in three different sizes. Okay, huge plus the cap. When you take it off, it will post. All right, so I'm going to do that to all of them here. That's part of the downfall, I wanna tell you about that. All right, so the cap will post on the ends of all of these. The way the mechanism works is, I'll take the cap off for demo purposes here. The way that this works, you just unscrew it very simply, and then you have this syringe-like mechanism here, and you have these two buttons on the side that say push, and they're like a silicone, they're very easy to push in. So let's go into our water jar here, and I'm just gonna squeeze the back of this and let that water express back into here because I wanna show you how to fill it. So when you squeeze these two, you'll get out the remaining drops of water. It's like a little squirt gun. And now it's completely empty. So to fill it, you're gonna squeeze in both of these buttons where it says push. There's one on, on each side. So you squeeze that in, submerge this end with the tiny hole in it, you're gonna submerge that and then very slowly pull back on the piston. And you do wanna do this slowly because if you go faster than this, you will end up with a big air bubble. And even see right then, I only got that much water. So we gotta turn it back up and we're gonna push the piston, letting the air out. I'm just pushing the piston back up, letting this water, well see now I've got the piston as far as it go and I've still got a bubble of air in there. So let's try again. I'll squeeze these, go under, and pull back very slowly. There we go. Now I can see that it's water up to the stopper here. Okay, so that's the way you fill it. So you kind of need a container that you can get both hands in and um, have a container of water with you. So for taking on the road, I two out of 10, these are not my favorite. But anyway, let's see how they paint. So we'll get that cap back on there and we're going to put this on now. Let me tell you something about posting this cap. If you don't think about it and you just push this on, you can end up pushing this down and then making water come out of the tip. So that's one fault because my favorite feature, the cap that posts on the end of the pen, causes water to come out. So remember to hold this inner piston when you put that cap on. And when you're out on plein air, you don't wanna lose your cap, so you kinda of need to have a place to put it, and that's the most natural place. All right, so let's try going into the ultramarine blue. This is the White Knight's set of paints. I've been playing with it a little bit, but this the, the brush is always wet. You, can you see it's, it's just always got water on it? So. I have primed these paints though, so let's pick up some of that pigment. And then I'm not going to push on the buttons. I'm just gonna show you what you get. Now this is the smaller of the two. So we're just gonna try and do a little wash here. Can you see how at the front of the bristles, there's more pigment coming out than there is at the back of the bristles? So, 
I submerged the entire width of the filament in the paint. I got paint up the whole thing. This drives me nuts. You always have to go back and smooth out your washes. So if that doesn't bother you, then this might be the brush for you. So that is one feature, is having to smooth out the wash. And I'm gonna call it a feature. Um, another thing about these, let me just get the little point here. They're pretty good for making detail. So you could do grasses. You could do some pretty fine lines. And if you're into calligraphy, which I am not, um, it does enable you to go up with a fine line and down with a thicker line. Uh, you can do traditional leaves where you press down and pull up. And I know that I'm running out of pigment here. I, I hope you can see that well enough. The one thing that you're not going to be able to do with a water brush is dry brush technique. As the name implies, it's a water brush. So doing dry brush with a water brush is kind of a fool's errand. You can see it's just really uneven and you have that thicker line of pigment at the top. So save the dry brush technique for a traditional brush. The Karen Dash has a decent point on it, uh, but the bristles do stain after use. So there is that. And it, it doesn't affect anything. But the cleaning it, again, really simple. You just squeeze, drop of water comes out, and then you just paint off whatever pigment. And then you pull that cap off cap it up and you're good to go. So let's take a look at the next biggest size. It's the same setup, same exact brush. They all work on that same principle. Let's go ahead and put a drop in here. See when I opened it, a drop of water fell out. That's another thing. Don't open and close these over your artwork because chances are you'll get a leak. Now I've got the pigment all the way on there. It's all the way up to the, to the ferrule. So let's see how, what kind of a wash this one does. Same issue, when I go down, the pigment is really focused on the end of the bristle rather than on the part where it is back here touching. Now these are artificial filaments, so they're not gonna function like a animal hair brush, but I can get a much smoother wash. Let me add some water to this. I can get a much smoother wash with an actual brush dealing with these fibers which frankly feel like nylon i don't know what they are but they are definitely a synthetic as you would expect the lines are a little fuller and the leaves are a little whiter there we go that's a little better uh still look a little weird for me to be leaves but anyway uh calligraphy let's do that little test here you can go up with a fine line down with a bigger line and so on I think if you are a calligrapher and are looking for this, I would stick with a quill brush or whatever it is you've normally been using. Um, these would work in a pinch for journalism maybe, but for calligraphy, for doing wedding invitations or something like that, I, I don't know, maybe if you're a super skilled calligrapher, that's not an issue, but for me, impossible. Um, and again, same thing, dry brush technique just does not work with these. Got a little bit of one there, but it has a tendency to just refill because that's the way these are designed to work um, is to constantly have the water flowing. So to clean this out, now we're going to squeeze the sides and get that drop of water to run down. And then we just paint and I'll go to a clean area on the towel so that you can see it really does work pretty quickly to clean these out. And there you go. Now the third one in their set, and I think you can purchase these individually. I'll check on that too. Uh, same fill up method, so let's do that because I don't think I've filled this one in a while. Got it submerged, even though the cap is on here, you can still do this. So squeezing, slowly pulling up that plunger. And I got some air in there. There we go, that's not bad. This one, I don't use that much. So let me make sure that I've got the water flowing in it. There we go. We'll go into that ultramarine again. And this one is, is like a felt tip. 
So, to be honest, of all of them, this one's kind of my favorite. It's, it's just fun. You can literally write with watercolor. And for me, I think that's awesome. So, I don't know. I think that this would be a really fun thing to play with because you can turn any paint, any of these paints into a marker with this, a water-based marker. So of the three, <laughs> I like this one the best. Uh, let's see what how fine of a line we can get though, because it's a pretty, uh, it's not a very fine point. as markers go. But, you know, for everything else, I really like it. I think it's the funnest little thing. You just you just dip in your paint and you can draw. You know? <laughs> little kid flowers. Uh, you know, just all these things. It's just, it's really kind of fun. However, where would I use this? That's the problem I run into. I don't, I don't have an application for this. If you're an artist, maybe if you're a cartoonist, or um, if you like to work with markers, maybe that would be the way to do this. Um, this might be a fun way if you are an adult colorist and want to put some color down under whatever you're putting colored pencil on. Let's see how, what kind of a, a wash we can get with this. And if you need more water, you can just squeeze that as you're using it. Honestly, I like this wash better than the one we got from the other two brushes. So if you wanted to fill in an area first and then go back and color over it, this is always an option. So same thing, how we clean it. This one does seem to hang on to a little bit more pigment in that felt tip. But there, I think that's clean. This one is bent just a little and I don't know why. Unfortunately, in my search online, um, I cannot see where replacement nibs are sold for this particular pen. Pros and cons. Oddly, this one is my favorite. Now, let's see, the paper I'm using, by the way, is 100% um, cotton B paper. Don't know if I mentioned that. But let's take a look at the Zig set. This is a set by Kiritaki, and I really do like these. It comes in a set of four. You can buy them individually as well. The variety that you get with brush tips is really nice. You have this one, which is probably like a number two round. Post that cap, my favorite thing. This one, which is more like an eight. It's thicker than the Karen Dash. And then we have this one, which is like a two, or maybe even a one. No, I'd say it's a two. Very nice for detail. And I also like how these are color, different colors, so you can really tell very quickly um, which one you're going for. In your bag, these kind of all just look dark. This purple and this black, the red one stands out, but these two really can look very similar. But these all look very different. And this one that's tinted blue is a wide flat wash probably about quarter an inch so let's let's use a, a same paint here and since they're all they've all got water in them I'm going to start with this quarter inch flat here and you can see what a beautiful lay down this has and if you need more water you just squeeze gently on the sides Here's some air coming out. There must not be very much water in this one. So in honor of that, I will show you how to fill it. Very simple. Oh no, there's a ton of water in it. Um, you just take this off. And this one is also a plunger method. So we're gonna squeeze that out. 
not a, su a suction method, that's what I wanna say. So you're just gonna squeeze your fingers together, put it under, and then fill it up. And you can take this out and hold it under the faucet if you'd rather do it that way. But that's the quarter inch flat. Really like how that lays color down and I think you have quite a bit of color in there. Clean that one off. The next one, let's test the largest one and this one also has water in it already. So we'll put one drop in the, two drops, <laughs> in the ultramarine there and let's try filling a wash. Now, can you see the difference between the performance of this one and the, the Karen Dash? The paint flows from these a lot more evenly. So you do have some of that variance in the up-down shading, but not nearly where we were with the Karen Dash. So really nice that way. And let's see, let's see what kind of a fine line we can get with this one, and this is their largest brush. So that is a very fine line. I feel like I can get a lot thinner of a line than I could with the Karen Dash. And both of these, I'm using very little pressure. So these are the Zig, I, I wanna say they're the Zig Kurataki. Very nice brushes clean just as easily as all the rest. Same thing, white filaments to begin with, but they, they will stain. So we'll put this one back, and I love it because when you post this cap, all right, here it is, sealed. When you post the cap, you don't risk run any risk at all of dropping water out of your brush at, at any time. So now this one is the one that's about a number four. Let's try that one more time here. There you go, that's better. I think that first first test was user error. So, so far, the, um, the bigger one here, the number eight, has the best wash capability. This one still gives you a little bit of variegated action from stroking the brush up and down. Uh, let's try to see how thin we can get with this one here. about the same as the one on top, which is about the same as the smaller Karen Dash. So, oh, I forgot to, to show you these, all the same things. These are gonna be able to do the leaves, although these I think look better. And you're going to be able to do the, the calligraphy strokes. So that's this one, you know, let's do a real quick test again with this one doing the leaves because I was not prepared. I forgot to do it. Sorry. It's just that the pigment comes out of it a lot nicer. I just think that these are better manufactured than the Karen Dash. So that's the Zig Kurataki. Now let's test the finest one that they have. And you know, I just leave this water in here. I never empty it out until it's absolutely necessary. This one has this much water in it, so I don't need to refill this one either. So we'll go into our little pigment. And let me get another sheet of paper. Now this is like a, a number two. Guys, that's very nice. I mean, you can see a very subtle blending there. I mean, uh, an unevenness in the stroke, but I mean, come on. This is incredible. I, I, okay, yes, I'm kind of biased, but I really like these brushes. So when you're out, especially doing plein air, and you need to fill in small spaces or do grasses, look at this. Look at that fine stroke you can get. 
you can paint lavender. So that's very nice. Let's try doing some little leaves with this one. Very nice to do. This would be really cute going around a wreath or something. So for journalers, I know a lot of uh, people who journal and they like to do it at night while sitting in their bed. This is great. You don't have to worry about having a big water cup and then dripping your paints everywhere. This one is really, really nice. Let's see what it's like for calligraphy, my non-calligraphy. <laughs> I just think this brush is fabulous. So that is the Zig Kurataki line of water brushes. So don't think they're all the same because they're not. Another one that I really like is this guy. This is the Tombow water brush. Now I just have the medium size and I uh, got it singly. I don't know where I got it from. However, you can get the set of three, which is the ideal companion for the Tombow brush pens. That's how it's advertised and it's not wrong. Um, you can use the small and the medium water brush for fine details or the flat one for broader coverage. It's just such a simple design. I love that you can fill it from under the faucet. There's no gizmo on the end of there, so you can just hold it under a very fine stream of water and get it filled. Um, but for today's purposes, I'm just gonna dunk it here. So that makes that super simple, okay? So now that this guy is full, let's dry him off. Let's take a look, we'll go back into our ultramarine. And let's take a look and see how the uh, wash is with this one. See, now you have the same issue that you did with the Caran d'Ache, where you have some of this variance in the stroke, where most of the pigment is at the tip instead of at the back. And again, that's the way you get around it, is you have to blend it out some more. But even when you blend it, it's, you know, you're getting this uneven thing. Um, again, that is the nature of the water brush. However, I think the ones that do it the least are these Zig brushes. Let's see what kind of fine line we can get with the Tombow. Now, this one has a really nice point on it. Nicer than all the others. So, one thing when I am painting with these, I've noticed that what I need to do, haha, there's the cap. What I need to do is, once I dip my my brush into the paint, that's too much paint on there. So I always kind of have to roll it off a little bit, just as you would with a traditional brush. So now let's see what kind of fine lines we can get with this. I think that is comparable to this number two zig, the smallest zig. Uh, you can really get some nice fine lines here. Let's make some leaves. We'll do that on a branch. Give it some purpose. So yeah, if you're doing leaves when you journal, look at that wonderful point, the tip you, you can get on the leaves. I mean, that's, that's amazing. I would say if you are doing any kind of calligraphy or journaling, this one is great. And then let's do some of my non-calligraphy. Oops, I need more, sorry. Gotta make it fair. Squeeze some water out of there. Now the minute that I started painting with the calligraphy, that's not really calligraphy, <laughs> this one felt like it was made for this. So all of you calligraphers out there, this is the one. Let's see if I can just do something here. Uh, what letter should I do? So I'm doubling this speed here because I just kind of wanted to play with this brush a little bit which is kind of a good sign, right? Like it, it made me want to play with it some more. I, I don't know calligraphy, but to be honest, this one kind of wanna made me learn. Um, I can write what sheep say, I can write ba, <laughs> uh, and at least it's legible, but the brush is so easy to use. I think, I think this is essential. This one and this set are your essential water brushes. There's one more that I have here that you might get in an art kit or something, 
This brush was actually given to me um, as a freebie, a thank you. And I <laughs> just like the Derwent water brush, I was really stymied by this one, but it's because it doesn't go righty tighty, lefty loosey. You turn it to the right to open it and you have to turn it to the left to close it. So that was just too much mental gymnastics for my little brain. Unfortunately, I don't have the packaging on it anymore. All I remember is that the writing on it looked entirely Japanese. Um, I like the way it fills. You can do it with a single stream under the faucet or see, there it is. You gotta turn it backwards in my mind to get it to close. Um, or you can uh, put it submerge it in water like I did there. It posts, I'm in love already. And it, wow, okay, that point is almost like my uh, LeBenzin brushes. That's incredible. Oh, this might be a new favorite. So just got a little bit on there. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna need to squeeze out a little drop. There we go. Let me get some more now that I've got the brush really wet. Attempt number two. Same thing. You're getting a lot of the, the bulk of the pigment stays at the tip. However, if you were working on some leaves or something, I bet this would be pretty beneficial. So let's try, first let's try our hash marks. Oh, this one by far, you can get the finest lines. It's hard to keep it straight though. Let me squeeze this again. There we go. I just didn't have enough paint on there. I feel like I have to slow down with this one. But very fine line, finer than all the rest. And now for our branch. And some leaves. This definitely makes you want to do longer leaves. And that makes sense because the filaments are considerably longer. Calligraphy, if that's your jam, up, down, up, down, up, down. Not as even, but that could be something I'm doing because again, I, I'm not a calligrapher, so I don't know, maybe you can look at my crazy calligraphy and decide which brush is right for you. So as water brushes go, this one, um, screws backwards to me, backwards to me. It's it's not righty tidy, lefty loosey, it's the opposite. It's lefty tidy, righty loosey, which is so strange. Um, again, just to me, that might not be strange to you. So this one, if you need super thin lines, this is a good one to go. However, the Tombow has a great point on it. And I think for all around, this is a better brush because you're also gonna be able to do a nice wash with it. The Karen Dash. I, I think they're a fun experiment. I think there's too much going on here. Um, but this one is great. If you wanted to have a marker for your watercolors, this one's kind of fun. So that's my thought on the Karen Dash set. This set here, the Zig Kuritaki, woo. The Zig Kuritaki set of water brushes, hands down, my favorite, augment it with this one. Real quickly, I think the ones that most people have seen that I have since given to my grandkids are the Pentel water brush sets. They're kind of in a light blue cartridge and uh, they hold a lot of water, real easy to fill. I didn't like them. I thought that they just had too much water coming out of them and I found it very difficult to control. Now for young artists, I think the Pentel brush set is excellent. However, it's kind of pricey for um, the audience that I think it's best suited for. Uh, personally, the set I had, it was impossible to control the amount of water coming out of them. It was always too much and it was constantly frustrating. So I gave one to my two-year-old grandson and I gave another set to my three-year-old granddaughter. 
they love them, their parents love them because that way they can do all their watercolors without having to have an open container of water. However, for the price point, I'm sure you can find something a lot more affordable if you do want to give these to children to use in a, in a classroom type setting. And these are the ones that win. These are the, the maybes. <laughs> and this one is the very unique one. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week at the next review. Take care. Bye.